Hey, hello, Math 10. Uh, we're taking a look at a question that's uh, a little bit tricky. A student was asking about this question, so I thought I'd share the answer with the whole class in case it's uh, confusing you as well. So here we got uh, 1600, and we're trying to find out if it's a perfect, uh, if there's a perfect square root for it. This is question 3G from uh, page 27 and section 13. So uh, if we're trying to figure out if a number has a perfect square root or not, then one thing we can do is we can divide it into all of its prime factors and see if there's like each prime factor comes in pairs. If that's the case, then we can sort of uh, square root each of those pairs and just uh, find out so individual uh, groups of prime numbers. So I'll show you what I mean. So what we'll do is we'll take 1600, we're trying to figure out the, if there's a perfect square root, right? So we can just break it into various um, various factors and, and see what we get. We we'll go all the way down to the prime numbers. So we got uh, 1600, I can see breaks into 16 and 100. And then 16 can break into four and four. 100 breaks into 10 and 10. And four breaks into two and two. And so does this four and 10 breaks into five and two and this 10 also breaks into 5 and 2. So our prime factorization basically tells us that 1600 is the same as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, if we're trying to figure out the square root of this number, then what we can do is we can look at um, pairs of prime factors, and we can sort of uh, cancel those out to find out what the perfect square will be. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, for example, when we square root 1600, well, we'll square root each sort of pair as well. Each one of these sort of pairs. So just as a reminder, uh, maybe 2 times 2 equals 4, right? So the square root of 4 equals 2. If you have a number times itself, that gives you a perfect square. It's just, that's just sort of the definition of a, of a perfect square. So each one of these, um, you know, pairs of twos, or, or the pair of fives for that matter, is going to give us a perfect square. So when we square root them, you know, we'll be left with, I'm kind of running out of space here, but, you know, this pair of two will reduce to, you know, two. When we square root it, this will turn into two, this will turn into two, this will turn into five. So the square root of 1600 is going to be two times two times two times five. Uh, which is going to be 40, right? So 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 is 40. So the square root is 40. So, yeah, so we can determine it does exist. Now, that's just one way to do it. You could have done it a little bit earlier um, if you had noticed some perfect squares. Uh, so, for example, uh, you might have noticed that uh, 16, uh, maybe I'll, I'll just highlight it here, um, 16 and 100 are perfect squares. So when you take a square root, something like 1600, uh, it turns out that you can break up 1600 into a product and take the square root of those separately. So 1600 equals 16 times 100. So we can take the square root of each of those things separately. Uh, square root of 16 times the square root of 100, which is going to be 4 times 10, which will give us... 40. So we get the same sort of thing going on. So there's kind of two different ways to do it. You can go all the way with your factor tree if you want, and you can take a look. If you have all your prime factors come in pairs, then you can, you know, just take one of each of those pairs and multiply those together. You might also notice that at some point you can, you know, break your, um, your um, square root, the number you're square rooting into a product of perfect squares as well that are a little bit easier to notice. So that works out nicely too. So two different ways to approach that question. It turns out, so it turns out it does have a perfect square. <laughs> okay, so thanks, uh, Matt. I hope that helps for that question. Uh, we'll talk to you soon.